I'd just interject. I'd like to get some perspective from some of the other panelists in terms of, you know, obviously there is a big debate going on in the community about Titan, about the one potential employer here. And, um, you know, I'd like to get, since we have so many community leaders up here, I'd like to get your perspective on how you think we are doing, you know, not, not necessarily in terms of just Scott's group or, or present day, but what we should be doing going forward in terms of targeting industries. Are, are we, you know, should we as a community be in the business of turning down businesses that would like to locate, locate here? I think the mayor did your hand up. I think we, we were talking about being one dimensional. We were talking about we don't want to be another Myrtle Beach. And one of the great things about our community in this city, in this county, and this region has been our diversity and the diversity of businesses that we have here. It's been a tremendous debate about this Titan cement. And of course, I'm on the WID board and never thought our wildest dream that we would run into the buzzsaw that we have run into. There's a lot of concerns out there, and I personally do not feel that Titan has done a proper job in defining itself and its mission. And what it should, what it should be doing is answering the questions and the concerns that we as a public have. Saying that, looking at the facts, and I always try to trying to separate opinion from fact. You're, you're entitled to your own opinion, but you're not sometimes entitled to your own facts. The facts are that this was a piece of property that was already zoned heavy industrial. This was a site that already had a cement company or cement plant on it. This was a site that this company, Titan Cement, bought in the early 90s. They just didn't buy it yesterday. Mrs. Justice, Mr. McComas, Senator Bozeman, Representative Hughes, and all of our state legislature have spent decades formulating environmental policies at the state level to regulate what happens when an industry comes to our state or to our community. We've had tremendous debate at the state level, pro-environmentalists, anti-environmentalists, but whatever the case is, they have created policies, procedures that protect us, the citizens. The city doesn't do it. Counties don't do it, the state does it. They, they are the environmental uh, watchdog for our communities. And there's gonna be a process here. There's about five regulatory agencies that have to review what happens with Titan Cement. The United States Army Corps of Engineers, the EPA, the Division of Water Quality, DENA, and the Wildlife Fisheries. They've gotta go through five hurdles. I would imagine if they can hurdle, get over all five of those hurdles, they probably will be permitted. And if they don't, they won't. You know, people fail to realize that, you know, we have the largest fiber optic uh, plant in the world here located on 132. If you drive by that plant, they have smokestacks. And those smokestacks have emissions. And they go out into the air. But the regulatory agencies looked at that. And they approved it based on the emission standards. And I think that we need to all ask the serious and tough questions of Titan. And they've got to answer those questions as a community. And I'm not just talking about when a doctor comes up and says, this stuff is going to kill us. We all know mercury will kill us. You just don't take a glass of it and drink it. But you, there is emission standards that we have all over this country. And we have to follow a process. There are some people, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, will say, we don't want them. And I think that's a bigger debate, Rob, that we're going to have to have in this community. Do we want that type of industry or not? And if the answer to that is no, then we all have to ask ourselves, are we going to be more like Myrtle Beach? If you go down there right now, you've got people driving up 17 North, coming to Wilmington looking for jobs, because the industry there is all tourism related and retirees. And that industry down there right now is hurting. I think we need to have a big debate in this community whether we want it or not. And I think this is going to be the bigger debate. about creating the workers for all of these jobs. But I, I think that the Titan issue, um, Bill, goes beyond, and I think he touched on this basically, it goes beyond whether or not they meet environmental standards. It, it goes to what Connie started us off with. It goes to the heart of Cape Fear future and the way we see ourselves as a community and the branding of this whole region. Uh, and what we see ourselves as, perhaps, is, is much closer to the idea of knowledge workers. I'm not saying, I'm not even commenting on whether Titan should come in here. I think there's a larger issue at hand about how we create a community that attracts the economy based on knowledge workers.
future and you go through that process. And it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a really nice thought to sit back and see Wilmington as Austin, Texas and other places along that nature and attracting PhDs and chemists and others from all around the world. But you've got a third grade dropout rate or, or a 10th grade dropout rate that's huge. By 11th, it's higher. You know, when these kids finish high school, what kind of jobs do they have in Wilmington right now? You know, you know, used to be able to finish high school and, you know, there was a competition. If you got through, you got rewarded for that degree. And there's a lot of people who don't need to go to, you know, everybody needs to go on and educate themselves, but don't want to, can't. It doesn't work for them. And I think our job at WID, and as we've looked at this, and I've talked about trying to attract people in and retain people, our job at WID and any economic development is to try to find people who make sense to move into Wilmington, as Bill said you know, as you go through it. We had a zone piece of property for Titan. Does it fit? Doesn't it fit? You know, it fit for what we have today. You know, you come out with jobs that pay what Titan's going to pay, you know, it starts taking, fill, filling some of your infrastructure problems because at least some of these kids who are going to be fighting, there's an incentive at the end of it to work because they might get hired into a job like that. I have no clue whether Titan's the right type of job, you know, right type of product right now for this community. <coughs> I also agree. I think they've done a lousy job in selling themselves. I think they're picking up and trying to do better. But on the flip side, I think when you do that, we've brought them to town. It's open for the debate. They have to hit the hurdles. They have to hit the types of things that they need to to be part of our community. If they don't, we don't want them. If they do, you know what? The other communities they've been in sing their praises. But on the flip side, they better hit those parameters. But on, when you do that, they have great paying jobs that we start getting in and putting people who are trying to, you know, as an incentive for people to finish school because there are opportunities. We're, it, we are a diverse economy. But we've got to place some of these kids. We've got to find jobs for them. You know, they don't want to work in my service level down in the cafeteria or in housekeeping for their entire career. They're great jobs from a standpoint of not being, you know, not finishing school. And on the flip side, because you get benefits and a variety of other things. But my God, to think you're 20 years old and the rest of your life, this is your future. And I think for some of that degree, we've got, you know, we've got to come back with our diversification and not become a Myrtle Beach. Again, no criticism, but we've got to diversify so that people have that opportunity. If anything we've learned in North Carolina, you better have diversification. You've learned that I come from Pittsburgh. You better have diversification or your population. I could ask the group how many Steeler fans we have in the room, and there's a lot of Steeler fans that probably exist in here. There's a very simple reason. There's a, you know, you always say on the thing, Okay, growing up in Pittsburgh, strong union town, variety of other things. You know, blue collar out, probably one of the most quintessential blue collar towns in, you know, in our country. But there's, you always see the Steelers, everywhere they go, look how their fans fill the, you know, fill the stadium. It's because we all left. None of us could find jobs. <laughs> you couldn't eat. Nobody could find a job. You had to go elsewhere. So that's why so many people from Pittsburgh have left. It's not because they wanted to leave Pittsburgh. It's actually a phenomenal city for, you, for the Northeast, okay, for the weather. But on the flip side, there were no jobs. We had to leave to find jobs. And where do we come? The South, because there were jobs. Now we're in the South. There's not as many jobs. I, 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 I think, think about it, and we're here, huh? And we're coming, and we're old, and we're going to need health care, and we're going to charge money. It, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing as you go through this, but, you know, it's, it's a heck of a debate. It's nice to be righteous, but on the flip side, we got major systemic issues that have to be fixed.